Hey everybody, it's Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. We're on a felucca right now and we are heading to the Temple of Isis on the island of Philae in Aswan. Usually when you go to the Temple of Isis, you have to negotiate with the boat drivers at the landing dock next to the temple. But we were lucky and the hotel that we're staying at, Eco Nubia, was able to arrange the boat for us since our hotel is right beside the temple. We also were able to get our tickets for the temple from the boat driver himself. So all we have to do is just get ready to take in this ancient pharaonic temple. The boat journey is fairly short. It should take only 10 minutes or so. It's really hard to bargain with people at the ferry dock, but if you really stick to your guns, you should be able to get a fairly reasonable price for the boat to the Temple of Isis. Check out the low dam on your way over to the temple. This dam is the first dam that was built in Aswan in modern times, built in 1902. And the high dam was built about 60 years later because the low dam reached its maximum capacity. Here's the ticket for Philae Temple. It's one of the most expensive sites that you can see in Egypt at 180 pounds, but it's totally worth it. This UNESCO World Heritage Site was completely picked up and moved to its current home when the temple was going to be submerged in Lake Nasser after the completion of the high dam. We've been on the boat for about five minutes and the temple is dead ahead. This temple is so cool. It's the latest temple that was built in the ancient Egyptian style. And because of that, it's really well preserved. I'm looking forward to showing you the Temple of Isis. I was told by the boat driver there are no crocodiles in this part of the river, but still kind of freaks me out to think about them. Here is the Temple of Isis. The hotel that we're staying at is on the island right here next to the temple that's behind these couple of boats that are coming, which I'll do a separate video on that hotel. You get a really great view of the side of the temple as you bolt past it to get to the landing. Here is the boat landing we just got off of our felucca. All of the felucca boats just hang out here and wait while you're at the temple. It's always a good idea though to get the phone number for your driver just in case you need to give them a call if something happens. Otherwise, they should be waiting here for you when you finish. We're outside the pylon gate for the Temple of Isis. This temple was built to honor the goddess Isis and, so like I said earlier, was the latest built Egyptian temple. So this is the last one that was built in this style before they stopped building temples like this in Egypt. We're gonna just walk around and look at some of the amazing reliefs and some of the different temples scattered throughout the island because the Temple of Isis is this large structure behind me, but there's a bunch of smaller structures as well that are on this same space. All of the reliefs and iconography in ancient Egypt had meaning. It's cool to look at them and think about what they could mean with your own interpretation. This shows the pharaoh smiting enemies. These up here show the pharaoh offering, making offerings to the gods. There's so many different types of styles and scenes in ancient Egyptian iconography. It makes wandering around these temples really fun. Another cool thing about the Temple of Isis is you notice this cross symbol right here. The Temple of Isis was repurposed in later years as a church, and you'll see cross symbols throughout the temple that represent that, that Christians tried to reclaim this as a place of religious worship for worshiping God and Jesus instead of the ancient Egyptian god goddess Isis. Not condonable today, but a long time ago, people who would visit this temple and other sites in Egypt used to leave their mark 
You can see graffiti from all sorts of different people and different time periods scattered throughout the temple. We're inside the gate of the first pylon, and this is the second pylon gate. Through it is the columned hall and the inner sanctuary. This courtyard is gorgeous. And here's the back of the first pylon gate that we were just outside of when we were at the entrance to the temple. We're here inside the columned hall, inside the second pylon of the temple. All of these different columns used to support the ceiling. This area used to be completely closed off to the outside. Here's a couple more crosses as we enter into the inner sanctuary. This is the place where the statue of the goddess used to be kept. The lights in here are a reminder that another option to take in the Temple of Isis is to come visit at night for the sound and light show. It's pretty cheesy, but it's worth it to be able to explore the temple at night and look at everything be lit up with colorful lights. You can easily spend an hour or more exploring all of the different rooms and chambers and hideouts in these ancient Egyptian temples. This is the most inner chamber of the inner chamber at the Temple of Isis. And this place right here is where the icon of the goddess herself used to be. Here's some graffiti in Arabic at the Temple of Isis. Check out the Coptic Christian symbolism that's going on with this part of the Hippostyle Hall. So cool. The whole complex on Philae Island was built to an attitude throughout history. The Temple of Isis is not the only building or structure in this area. We're walking up to Trajan's kiosk, which has really pretty views of the water. Trajan's kiosk is a great place to sit, chill out, have some water, put on some sunscreen, or if you bring a little bit of food, have a picnic lunch while looking out over the water. Here's a side view of the Temple of Isis and the first pylon gate. Here's a nice side view of the Temple of Isis, second pylon right there. We are walking now to the Temple of Hathor, which is a lot smaller than the Temple of Isis, but has some cool reliefs inside. Here's the inside of the Temple of Hathor. Some of these reliefs are really interesting. We've got somebody who looks like playing a drum. It looks like a like a, a monkey playing a harp. Just fun, bizarre. Cool to wonder about what everything meant and the significance when they decided to make these reliefs thousands of years ago. We're outside the Temple of Isis and we're at the bottom tip of the island. There's the kiosk of Trajan right there. And this large wall is the back wall of the temple in the inner sanctuary. Even though the ruins at this part of the island aren't as impressive, the views of the water and of all of the rock formations coming out are super cool to see. An important thing to think about when you're walking around this complex on Philae Island is that this island actually isn't Philae Island at all, but it's a nearby island that all of the monuments here got moved to before the construction of the high dam.
When the high dam was constructed in Aswan, they knew that it would flood lots of monuments that would lie south of the dam when Lake Nasser was created. So they decided to move these monuments piece by piece to where they are today. Considering the size of the pylon gate behind me and all the other pieces of stone that are in this complex, it's amazing to think about them doing this. Okay. Behind me is the bathroom at the Temple of Isis, which I was told is free to use. I always recommend using the bathroom before you go visit a site if possible, but if you need to, there's a bathroom here that you can use. There's also a small bazaar and a place where you can buy water behind me and to the right. In the distance at the cafe by the Temple of Isis, you can see these metal poles sticking up out of the water. That is the site where the ancient island of Philae used to be and where they took the temple from. There's also a nice little cafe here where you can sit and have a tea, coffee, water while you look out over the water. This is the seating area, if you decide to do the sound and light show, that you will be at to take in the temple. If you have time when you're finished at the Temple of Isis, ask your boat driver to take you to the old gate. This gate that you can see is mostly submerged, and this is the site of the actual original temple so where it used to sit the island is completely underwater except that green part that you see sticking up still so this gate they left here um i'm not exactly sure why but it's just a great way to see what would have happened to this entire temple had they not picked up the entire thing and moved it onto its current island we're back on our boat after finishing the Temple of Isis on the island of Philae. And now our boat captain is gonna take us across the water to our hotel. We're staying at the Eco Nubia Lodge right next to the temple. Thanks for checking out the Temple of Isis with me. I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. Thanks for watching. Check us out on Instagram or Facebook at Egypt Adventures Travel or go to www.egyptadventurestravel.com.